Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another episode of the Azeroth Arsenal. This is a series where I talk about all of the interesting weapons and armor in the game. As per a suggestion, in this video I want to go over not a single item like normal, but rather a bunch of miscellaneous weapons from vanilla. Weapons that are interesting, but not really worth a dedicated video. There are of course a huge variety, and in this video we'll go over four, but I do still have many more for future videos. The first one I wanted to talk about is actually a set. As a vanilla rogue, I gotta talk about the Dalaran sword set. Before raiding, this was pretty much the sword set to have as a combat rogue, and I think it was also sought after by Fury Warriors. I believe Hunters also wanted it for the stats, although I imagine that there would be some pretty angry rogues if they were in the group. They were pretty unique because they were a weapon set, which was weird. Armor sets were common, but weapons? You didn't see that too often. We do have some lore and references tied behind them. Dalrend is the full name of Rend Blackhand, who is the son of the former Warchief of the Horde, Blackhand the Destroyer. He's been hanging out in the Blackrock Mountain along with his clan, hoping to overthrow Thrall for the title of Warchief one day, based on his lineage. Sort of a Game of Thrones mindset, but without the incest, as far as I know anyways. So, he allied himself with Nefarian and the Dark Horde, which was what the inhabitants of the Blackrock Spire called themselves, and has been biding his time and waiting for a moment to strike. The Upper Blackrock Spire was one of the first raids in vanilla. Only 15 men, but still a raid, and it was filled with some tough fights. Rend Blackhand himself takes on the adventurers in a gauntlet type of fight, where you're assaulted by waves of chromatic dragonkin. If you survive the initial onslaught, you fight Rend and his giant drake named Gith. At the time, there was a rumor going around that he would drop his mount, but that only came true a few expansions later with the Experiment 12B mount from Dragon Soul, which is a reference to Gith. And the other parts of the names, the Sacred Charge and Tribal Guardian, is a reference to Blizzard's action RPG, Diablo 2 with the sword set, Bokathos' Sacred Charge, and Tribal Guardian. Anyways, back to the weapons. The main hand had a slow 2.8 speed, which is what you wanted in your main hand back then for big hits. It also had 1% critical strike, back when those stats were percentage based. And some strength, which would make you think it was for warriors, but remember, this is vanilla and rogues were the most viable DPS spec. So, it was better in their hands, plus they still got some attack power from the strength. I might be a little biased though since I played a rogue back then like I said. So who knows, maybe it was equally good for rogues and warriors. The offhand was a fast 1.8 speed and had some defensive stats on it. So at first glance, you would think that this is for a tank, right? Well the problem here is that it's offhand only, so you couldn't use it with a shield. The itemization back then was all over the place and it was up to the players to decide who got the most benefit from which item. Except hunters, of course. They don't get that right. The set bonus was 50 attack power, which was pretty huge back then. That would be 50 points worth of agility, minus the crit, so nothing to sneeze at. So, these were the weapons to have pre-raid as a combat rogue. And, believe it or not, the look was quite impressive back then. When most weapons looked like this, Getting something that looked like this was a pretty big deal. Blizzard liked the model enough that it was reused for the Viscash the Bloodletter Sword that dropped from the Anixia's Lair Raid, another great one-hander for rogues. The drop rates for both of the swords were quite low as I remember. Even though they were just blue, I believe they had just a 5-ish percent drop rate for each one. The next item on our list is the Fell Striker, also dropped from Rend Blackhand. It was originally called the Death Striker before the name was changed for some reason. But what made this one special, as you can see, is while it didn't have any stats, it had an amazing proc. For every hit, 
he had a chance that all attacks are guaranteed to land and to be critical strikes for 3 seconds. This was pretty insane because even landing hits back then was tough if you didn't have enough of the hit stat. And even still, level 63s and bosses were also harder to hit in general due to how weapon skills worked. So basically, everyone wanted it. Combat rogues for the offhand, assassination rogues of course, fury warriors, and yes, even hunters. Hunters wanted everything back then. The proc rate was roughly 4% and it wasn't unique, meaning that you could equip two of them. So one of the best daggers in the game, probably even through the first few raid tiers due to the proc and if you ran into a rogue with these in PvP, you were in for a painful time. And just like many other weapons in the series, it got its own card in the trading card game which is pretty neat. See that? Rogue and Warrior. Don't even try it, Hunters. Since we're talking about Rend, we may as well talk about all of his drops. Another interesting item that dropped not from him, but rather his drake, was called the Chromatic Carapace, which wasn't an armor or a weapon, but a quest item. Not too far away from Rend's room, you can find an injured whelp named Abi, who's related to the Carapace. The Chromatic Dragonflight, whom he just got done fighting, are the result of unnatural experimentations by Nefarian. With Chromagus in the Blackwing Lair Raid being one of the biggest abominations. They're created by using the blood of dragons from different Dragonflights, and Abi is one of the many of the Blue Dragonflight that were captured by Nefarian. It asks you to travel to the Winter Spring Zone, and use its skill to teleport to the matron of the Blue Dragonflight, Hela. She would send you on a series of quests that would eventually award you with some epic armor of your choice. The breastplate or leg plates of the Chromatic Flight. To complete these, you need the Chromatic Carapace which dropped from Gith at a 2-ish percent drop rate, and you also needed 10 brilliant Chromatic Scales dropped and skinned from the Chromatic Dragonflight you just fought, and also skinned off of Chromagus in the Blackwing Lair. You also need Blood of Heroes, Skins of Shadow, and frayed abomination stitchlings depending on what armor piece you're going for, the legs or the chest. You may remember these materials in my Hardest Grinds video. You got the blood of heroes from the Eastern Plaguelands. They were spread throughout the zone on the ground, and when you picked them up, you would get ambushed by elite NPCs. The skins of shadow dropped from the Shkolomance dungeon at a low rate, and the stitchlings from the Stratholm dungeon from the abominations as you would guess. The breastplate was a plate chest that gave quite a lot of stamina, strength, agility, and fire resistance. It was actually really good for quite a while, especially for fire resist fights like Ragnaros. If you opted for the male legs instead, you had a choice between intellect or agility with resistances to each school of magic. One is aimed towards hunters and enhancement shamans, and the other for elemental and restoration shamans. This quest was removed along with many other things in the Cataclysm expansion, but it's remembered as a cool little addition to the Blackrock Spire raid. I actually got the Carapace on my Paladin. I was the last of several people to roll. One guy rolled a 99, and I miraculously rolled a 100 after him. Sadly, I never finished it though, so it was a big waste. Sorry random guy from 13 years ago. And since we're still talking about Rend, I got one more for you, and that's the Black Hand Doomsaw. There's really not a huge story tied behind this one, but I thought it was worth mentioning still, mainly because of the look. This was the trusty weapon of Rend Blackhand himself, and he had a chance to drop it. As far as weapon models went, it looked quite nice. It was a polearm type with runes etched onto the blade itself and ribbons hanging off of the handle. It had a fairly slow speed and a damage proc which made it a good starter weapon for fresh 60s and you would see a lot of paladins and warriors wielding it. It was the pre-Arcanite Reaper and people would jokingly call it the Black Hand Noob Saw since it was so common. One of the staples for vanilla two-handers. It was also used by the great Leroy Jenkins so that must mean it's amazing, right? So. All of these weapons are no longer available thanks to the Warlords of Drainer revamp of the dungeon and Cataclysm in the case of the Chromatic Carapace questline. The Doomsaw was actually preserved as a re-release called the Black Hand Doomcutter, 
a drop from the new revamped dungeon, and another one called Lantrezor's Warblade from a quest in the Burning Crusade expansion. The Dalren set was also acknowledged as an heirloom, so these weapons made their mark in the game for sure. Maybe not intricate enough to warrant their own videos, but still worth talking about, I think. So, that's about it for this one, I guess. Maybe I'll call this the Rent Blackhand Edition. The dude had quite the stock of interesting items. Lots of potential for other weapons for sure. I do have quite the list, including the Arcanite Reaper, the Iron Foe, Eshkandi, etc. But I'm always open to suggestions, so if you have any, by all means share them and you might see them in the follow-up. I hope you found the video interesting or entertaining. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Azeroth Arsenal. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.